charts in this particular case. But before we do that, we're going to set criteria and we're going to select the comfort model. And of course, the default is the California energy model. I'm going to use, uh, encourage you to use the ASHRAE standard 55 current uh, handbook of fundamentals model. Okay, so we're going to go with that. And you'll see here, here's all the kind of general data that comes with that model. In other words, it's, it's setting up a winter clothing indoors, summer clothing indoors. So it's assuming that you're, you know, a high thermal mass with night flushing, a maximum outdoor ter temperature difference above comfort high is 30. So these are all the kind of standards of to how to manipulate the data. Go next charts and of course this chart is just the weather data I'm going to t the first chart that's I like to look at and it's most useful is the psychrometric chart uh, and so you can see here it's going to talk about design strategies um, it, unless you're doing a very like a one-story office building or a dental or something like that or a residential it's it's pretty good for residential uh, then the guidelines or the design strategies really don't make much sense. Okay, but here we can see a whole series of design strategies. They turn them on all on. I wish they wouldn't. I wish they'd turn them all off. But I'm going to turn them all off except for the comfort. And so basically, of course, the psychometric chart. And uh, you can look up more information on that uh, in environmental systems class. We talked about the this in depth so uh, you can go back to those notes but basically you can see winter and summer clothing as it talks about here is on the right so summer clothing is on the right uh, winter clothing is on the left and that's the comfort zone of course the comfort zone is where based on temperature and humidity the person would be comfortable no matter what and then the first thing we can do is add shading if we add comfort shading so we should have shading of windows right here in other words to be comfortable you need to be out of the sun from this point on here if you're in the sun you're still going to be comfortable but uh, so the shading of windows so that the heat also doesn't uh, the sunlight doesn't strike the person directly uh, while they're sitting in there and then over here let's look so we raise the comfort level a little bit uh, not comfortable 91 percent of the time comfortable 9% of the time and then you'll see comfort indoors and there's several other things you can plot here uh, I normally don't use them uh, I use wind speed but not in this particular chart so comfort indoors and then you can look at this you know hourly data the all the dots right here okay represent hourly data uh, typical meteorological year in other words it's a uh, uh, a average or not an average, a statistical mean of the temperature and humidity for every hour of the year. Uh, <clears throat> that's what this data set that we brought in uh, represents. And so you can see all hours right here. If, for instance, we're doing office building, we might go to selected hours and say, well, we're not going to be there in 1 a.m. So let's talk about uh, when we are going to be there. We're going to let's assume that most people want to arrive before 7 a.m and that most people are going to leave you know by 7 p.m. and then you can see it's quite adjusted okay and you'll notice that the comfort zone because if we eliminated some of those uh, other temperatures uh, then the comfort just natural comfort increased and then not, not comfortable decreased okay and that's just because we're looking at fewer hours really and then uh, we can look at selected months so if we want to I would just look at this yearly but if you wanted to look for instance at those winter months then we could go in and go selected months and say well let's look through start with winter winter technically starts in December so we're going to uh, select December and then let's look at uh, January and February so we're going to look at the winter February okay so as you can see uh, comfort went up a little bit not a whole lot uh, and of course we probably don't need shade you can see the general temperature uh, right here and then uh, of course we can look at more specific uh, but we're pretty comfortable so we can try some some 
you know, passive techniques. Uh, one, one thing we might try is low mass, assuming that we don't have a massive structure, you know, uh, and we can increase that up to 35% total, as we can see right here. So if we can get a little solar gain uh, through the windows, south facing windows, then we can increase the comfort range uh, a little bit. And you can see the green uh, dots right there. This is the uh, uh, comfort passive solar direct gain. If we added a little mass, okay, uh, doesn't really make any difference, okay. Uh, passive solar direct gain for this climate is is more uh, a, a, appropriate, and the reason that is because mass would carry us uh, through until the night, and since we're not worried about the day, I mean the night, uh, and then it really doesn't increase the comfort. Uh, okay. Um, wind protection from outdoor spaces. We're really not interested in this. These two right here, don't turn them on because they are mechanical solutions. Okay, and what we're trying to do is look at uh, non-mechanical solution. Let's look at natural ventilation. So if we look at natural ventilation, in other words, if we could ventilate the building, okay, 0.2%. Uh, so making this building a naturally ventilated building doesn't make a whole lot of sense as far as investing design to do that. Okay. Uh, we, we can say, well, let's try some thermal flushing at night or something like that. And once again, you can see uh, that's only about 0.2. And the reason for that is, of course, in Austin, is that uh, the temperature at night doesn't get that, that cool. Okay, and It's totally different for, say, Lubbock or uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, this number may go up. So you can go through and check some of these strategies, okay? Uh, but as you can see, sh sun shading and then some passive solar direct gain or, or both. Uh, humidi hum humidification, of course, it's a hu relatively humid. Dehumidification, we can increase, but not by a whole lot, okay? Now, if you're in Houston, might be a totally different, different condition. Um, fan force ventilation and cooling, uh, once again 0.2, uh, internal heat gain, uh, that can be very useful, uh, especially in the winter. So if we can retain some of that internal heat gain, of course internal heat gain is uh, occupancy, occupants giving off heat, but as well as things like computers, computers give off a lot of heat, as well as, as, well as lighting. Okay, So once again we can uh, do some cooling here uh, from December to February. Yeah. Uh, now we've been talking about December to February in this case. Uh, let's go back now and look at summer. So I'm going to change this and we'll say summer starts in May and summer goes through say August and probably September actually. So let's go uh, down here to September. Okay. So those are kind of the hot times in Austin, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. once again. Okay, and you can see, of course, uh, sun shading now really critical. Okay, we really want to uh, shade the windows, get people out of direct gain. Uh, of course, internal heat gain uh, doesn't help us any really. Uh, <clears throat> we want to. Passive solar direct gain, of course, is not going to help us any at all because we don't have any heating need here. So now let's look at natural ventilation. Well, still 3.7%, not a whole lot. Uh, if we look at fan force ventilation and cooling, you know, not much help there. It's some minimal, but probably not worth the, the effort for design purposes. So once you've done the psychometric chart for a, uh, a particular time of occupancy of your building uh, and uh, one season, go ahead and do all the other seasons. For instance, here's September and November, okay, the fall. And you can see I went through and I looked at other things that might be more effective. For instance, uh, on all the other seasons, thermal mass with night flushing isn't really useful. but it has an impact on uh, the building in November. 
uh, same thing with two-stage evaporative cooling. Now, it may not be justifiable to do that, uh, either one, because uh, we're only talking about not the whole year, but just uh, a particular three months out of the year, so it may not be uh, useful. Also, natural ventilation goes up to 3.8%. Uh, so those might be things we want to look at. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of impact. Uh, sun shading, of course, of windows, once again, has a tremendous amount of impact. And we can see during the winter that we still have a lot of uh, heating demand, uh, I mean cooling demand, even though uh, in the fall we do get some cooler weather. Okay, so uh, in those graphs, we would just save out using file, uh, print, and uh, I would print to a PNG file and of course uh, you can just decide where you want to put that file and use it uh, and so we, you would end up with a series uh, a file here's uh, September November which I just showed you uh, let's see if I can go to the next image here's March and May okay so you can see uh, uh, once again uh, high thermal mass night flushing seems to work in March and May so the two swing times of the year that that can be effective in the summer it's it's not very effective at all uh, natural ventilation the same thing once again in the sw swing uh, months of uh, fall and spring uh, internal heat gain because there's still some uh, heating need we can still use a little uh, passive solar uh, direct gain as well as internal heat gain okay because there's still some heating need so anyway you can go through kind of analyze those and determine well what strategies I might want to look at uh, as far as the use of uh, the psychometric chart and next uh, we're going to look at you know natural ventilation since uh, since in, in a couple of these natural ventilation might be useful so we'll look at when and we might want to do that the other thing you need to realize too is is that I've limited the hours I'm looking at from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. because this is an office building if you were doing a restaurant uh, with uh, outdoor seating and stuff like that you would want to look at the times that the restaurants going to be op open Okay, so it might be a wider range or, or a bar or something like that. Uh, it, so it might be a, a lot wider range of hours. So just remember what I've been looking at in the analysis I've been doing is between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So make sure you adapt your analysis to the type of building that you're doing and the type of usage uh, that's going to be done in different uh, portions of the, of the building. Okay, so that's the end of the psychometric chart. The next I'm going to look at, as I mentioned before, we'll look at how we might use a climate consultant to, to look at natural ventilation.